Hi friends, I am Kate from the Kuchin Academy for Language Studies and we are back with a new video. How to prepare well for IELTS speaking part 2. So in the last video, we discussed tips for IELTS speaking part 1. And for those of you out there who have not seen that video, please click on the link below. Now we are going to see how to prepare well for IELTS speaking part 2. So, the second part of IELTS speaking is referred to as the long turn because it may seem like a monologue without any questions or prompts from the examiner. Students get stressed and find this area very hard and unpredictable. We normally don't speak continuously for two minutes unless we are giving a speech. So in this part, the focus is only on you because unlike the other two sections where there are questions thrown at you, and where you have a conversation with the examiner, here it's only you speaking. Now let's have a look at how this segment is held. The examiner will give you a cue card which may relate to any personal experience of yours or any event you have participated in or a person you know for example. And then you have one question on the cue card with three to four cues. Then the examiner will give you a paper and a pencil and you have one minute time for preparation and this is the part where you can jot down notes on your paper if you want to. Then you will have two minutes to give a talk and the examiner might nod or gesture you to stop or to speak continuously and these topics, the topics that are included in the cue card may be related to events, hobbies, activities, goals, ambitions or maybe changes in your life. So now let's have a look at the different ways to prepare for a cue card. So let's have a look at a question first. Describe an aquatic animal. What it looks like, when you saw it, where you saw it and explain why it was interesting. So in the first technique that we are going to follow, let's divide the piece of paper into four grids by drawing two lines and then we'll take each question word from each cue and write it what, when, where and explain. And then we can write down around at least two points under each grid. Like here for example under what I have written puffer fish, bloated and spiny. And under when I have written weekend trip, friend, evening. And under where I have written beach, trivandrum, seashore, sands. And an explain first time, saw, all puzzled, venomous. So as you have noticed, I have only written key words here. I have not written complete sentences. Because you just have one minute in hand and there won't be time to write complete sentences. So when you start speaking for two minutes, you can just have a glance at all the points here and you can speak in an organized manner. This will give a proper structure to your speaking. And it's not necessary, you only have to restrict yourselves to the points that are given here. If, you, if some point suddenly pops up in your mind, you definitely can add that to your talk. Moving on to the next technique, we use our five senses which are going to help us perform in our cue card. So we write down the five senses over here like sight, smell, taste, feel and hear. And then we write down words related to it. Like in the question that we discussed before, the words related to sight are puffer fish, bloated, spiny and big eyes. Basically it is what you saw when you went there. And then there's smell, salty and beach. And when it comes to taste, a word that is close to it is maybe venomous. And then we have feel which is curious, inquisite, saw and first time. And here everyone excited and poking it. So these are just the key words I have written here. And we can expand on this. But again, this technique might not work for all sorts of questions. So you can use it for certain questions if you feel it might suit. In this technique, we use a lot of descriptors and basically we are doing a lot of describing. You can use a lot of adjectives over here and that is what makes your IELTS speaking very interesting and the person on the other side feels like listening to you. So please keep describing guys and make your talk as interesting as possible. In the next technique, we write down notes randomly one below the other. But the problem that can pop up here is 
the lack of organization of ideas because you are just brainstorming a lot of random ideas that come to your mind and you just jot it down here. So you might have to keep a sense of organization in mind when you present your talk. So I would personally not recommend this only because of the lack of organization that comes up here. The next technique is the 5 W's and 1 H method. So here you write down all the random question words here like who, what, where, when and why and how. And then you try to answer according to the question. So this is actually similar to the first technique that we discussed where we take the exact question words from the cues that are given. But other than that, you can also try writing the other question words if you want to elongate your talk. So coming to the last technique. So here we just brainstorm a lot of random ideas that come to our mind and we don't write anything on the paper, we just speak in a flow. But some students face a problem here because they become blank after a certain point of time and they run out of points. So it's ideal to keep the cue card in front of you because you can peep at the cue card just to make sure you have not lost track. And again, coming to the second problem students face here is that they deviate from the topic entirely and they keep on talking and eventually they go off topic. So this must not happen in your case. So you will have to be alert here if you are using this technique. Now let's move to the tip for IELTS speaking part two. So the first tip is start with a good introductory line. This would make a very good impression on the examiner because you may seem very confident when you start with a good introductory line. So prepare a good introductory line in your mind when you prepare for a minute. Uh, for example, you can start off like a couple of years back, I happened to travel to and maybe you can add the name of a place or you can say, I would like to talk about. So these are few ways of starting off your speaking. Expand ideas. So expand your main ideas. Rather than making a lot of different ideas, it would be better if you can explain and elaborate the main ideas that are there. Appropriate vocabulary. Many students use words that don't suit the context and the vocabulary they use is wrong. So in such cases, your marks can be deducted. So please make sure to use the right vocabulary. A tip here is, you can maybe make a set of words and you can learn them every day and also write it Write an example sentence like use, you can maybe try to find out how such a word is used in a sentence. So in such conditions, you can use the right vocabulary at right places. Synonyms. So learn a list of synonyms because they are definitely going to be useful for you in this part of speaking. Uh, so many students uh, have, you know, they memorize a lot of words and they don't use it naturally. So it may seem very artificial. So use it in such a way that it seems natural and not forced because IELTS tests your natural speaking ability. Learn a set of idioms and phrases because you would actually sound good if you use them. You can use uh, idioms and phrases like um, hit the road, I was over the moon or cut to the chase maybe. So this would actually, you I mean you would have an edge above others if you use such idioms and phrases. Now the last one, as I keep on repeating the same point, don't memorize. Please don't memorize your answers because you would sound very artificial if you mug up answers. So it's good if you can just try to learn sentence structures and better grammar. That would be an ideal option than memorizing. Focus on fluency and pronunciation. That is very important because we tend to mispronounce a lot of words. And fluency again is another area where students struggle. So the more you speak, the more you can improve your fluency. And the next one is avoid fillers. Now what are fillers? Word like, words like um, ah, uh. So you would not sound good if you use fillers. So please avoid fillers. And the next one is use linkers. Using linkers such as additionally, in addition to, moreover, furthermore. So linkers actually give you know, they actually make you sound better. So you can use linkers. Now use stalling phrases. Stalling phrases such as another thing I can remember is or this brings to my mind or I would also like to talk about. So when you use such stalling phrases, you are getting more time to think and it would, it would also uh, sound good when you use them. So you can use stalling phrases. The next point you have to remember is using the right tenses. 
So we tend to use the wrong tenses at times. So the first thing you have to do when you get your cue card in hand is read the entire question and find out which tense you have to use. For example, have a look at this question. Describe your first day at school, where it was, what happened and explain how you felt on that day. As you can see in this question, you have to explain about an event that happened in your past. That is your first day at school. So which tense can we use there? The past tense, obviously, we can use the past tense here. So now let's have a look at the next question. Describe an activity that you usually do that wastes your time. What it is, when you usually do it, why do you do it and explain why you think it wastes your time. So as you can see here, you have to talk about an activity that you do periodically. And the right tense we can use here is the simple present tense, basically the present tense. That would be the right tense we can use here. So where can we use the future tense? You can use it in situations when you want to talk about something that you might do in the future. For example, have a look at this question. Describe a gift you would like to gift your friend. What gift would you would like to buy? Who you would like to gift? Why you would like to buy a gift for him or her? And explain why you chose that gift. So this could be a perfect example of a cue card question where you can use the future tense. Speak at a steady pace. So don't speak quickly in part two of your IELTS or even generally because if you speak quickly, you will be out of points after a certain time and you won't have anything to talk about. You might not even be able to speak for two minutes. And at the same time, speaking slow too is not a great option. So maintaining a steady pace is the best thing you can do for IELTS speaking. Speak on real life incidents. So when you speak on real life incidents in the form of a story, it will be very interesting and you would never be out of points too because you literally lived out that incident. But again, it's not necessary that you might get topics to speak on, on which you have experienced maybe. So you might have to make up at many times and that's when your imagination comes into play. You will have to draw experiences from others or maybe from what you have heard or seen on television, for example. So be as creative as possible. So talk or record yourself in English. The best way to learn English is by speaking to other people. So please make it a point to speak to others in English. Now, many people have come and told me that they don't have anybody to speak to in English. So I feel the best option is you can record yourself in the phone. Maybe you can time yourself for two minutes and listen to your voice after that and then maybe try to rectify the mistakes later. Don't panic. Candidates tend to get very nervous and stressed out. And if you get nervous and stressed out, this is definitely going to affect your fluency and pronunciation. So be confident. And if even if you make mistakes, it's totally fine. It's natural to make mistakes. So don't be conscious and continue speaking. Now let's go to the frequently asked questions by students. Is it okay if the examiner stops me before two minutes? Yes, it's absolutely fine if the examiner stops you before two minutes because the examiner might feel that you have answered all the cues or he, he or she may feel that you have answered enough for him or her to evaluate you. Is it necessary that I must follow the order of the cues in the cue card or can I come back to the previous cue after I finish speaking about a certain cue? Well, definitely, if you speak in the order of the cues, it would give your talk a bit more organization. Your, your speech might seem a bit more organized. But you do have the liberty to go back to the previous cue if you feel you have missed out a certain point. And in the end, keep practicing. For those of you who have not started practicing yet, Two minutes might feel like a bit of a long duration maybe. So keep practicing guys and keep speaking more and don't give up. Keep going. So that's it from our side for now. And we'll be back with tips for IELTS speaking part 3. Follow and join the calls community for more videos like this. Kuchin Academy for Language Studies, Alua Metro Station, Kuchin, phone 9061-056313.